creates a trust graph of people who are considered to be on the mainnet in a way and uh, if you the, the the there is a mathematical proof and the in the paper that is explaining this which is about 20 pages long uh, but uh, if, you, if you're trying to think of it very very intuitively uh, if the Pi network was just it wasn't the 35 million people plus we have but it was just me you and a couple of your friends and uh, the, they the way it works at Pi is that we get to select three to five people we know and trust literally from our uh, contact list and uh, this is for us our security circle and this, this the combination of all the security circles creates the trust graph so if in the in the network it was me pointing at you and your and two other people and you were pointing at me and some of them and they were pointing at you and uh, and we were pointing at each other uh, essentially if someone were to come and create 1000 fake accounts then those fake accounts wouldn't be able to affect the decisions that we make or where we have, we allocate our trust because in order for them to to modify anything in, in in our decisions they would need to convince us to stop pointing at each other and stand, start pointing at them okay okay now you have a robust um, active member users and that's it's 35 million plus and that's pretty impressive I would say how how did you how did you get that many people involved in into the Pi network in itself and just I can't wrap my mind around it it's amazing yeah so it's about being clear on the value propositions and uh trying to create a true utility, um, trying to provide a safe and fair ecosystem for everyone. So, so essentially, it's about being simple to use, simple to develop, accessible, basically no financial or technical barriers to begin, and uh, creating network effects. All right, all right. Now, what is your target audience for Pi Network? Right, that's a very good question. So I, I think that in order for us to create anything that is uh, that achieves mass adoption, and I think that's what the blockchain industry needs as a whole, and uh, we are we are all would like to collaborate on this. Uh, in order for the blockchain industry to achieve mass adoption, we shouldn't be only focusing on as one small audience like one specific segment um, we should focus on uh, everyday people um, it's it's good and it's easy to get excited a small group of tech enthusiasts or crypto people and of course it's necessary to begin from somewhere we can begin from there but we need to create interfaces that are uh, accessible by everyone so i would say you know everyone even okay. uh, uh, our parents and uh, our kids and <laughs> believe me i've been trying i've been trying and my mom and dad just they think i'm crazy <laughs> they really do they're just like go get a job start working which i do i do but i'm just like but this is the future mom and dad you should get into it especially while it's cheap and it's just they they can't wrap their mind around it they're just um you should send them a pie invitation code and uh, do the experiment to tell to tell us if they will manage to do it <laughs> oh i definitely will send it over and that challenge is on all right <laughs> so does the bear market clean out the landscape landscape i mean that that's right yes so in the crypto space there is a lot of uh noises and also there is a lot of um, uh, projects maybe that are in for the wrong reasons maybe trying to have some uh, quick uh, um, effects uh, without uh, paying attention to long-term value so it's usually the case that uh, long-term valuable projects are usually started or uh, 
um, basically persevered during uh, low times. Uh, yeah, because uh, a, anything that gets very quick uh, results uh, can also very quickly decay. So we, we saw some of that in the in the previous months or the beginning of uh, of this uh, uh, period. I agree. I agree. And it just shows who the real enthusiasts are. Also, I personally like the bear market. It's it's just something I like talking more about it when times are bad, just because I know when times are good, people are just going to be like, Hey, you know, well, you know what, Sonny or Crypto Kid, you were right, or Doctor, you were right, you know, at school or something like, or your peers, or somebody that you were trying to convince, so or persuade. You know, I, I, there's something I like to. Uh, it's about going to conferences. So when the crypto space is very hot, then you go to conferences and there's so many people there and. The, the com types of conversations sometimes you're having are very shallow. But when uh, times are a little more uh, smaller, uh, then uh, you tend to meet and discuss and have uh, a lot more challenging conversations. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And you have to have the answers for them. And sometimes, sometimes you don't because you're just, you're continuously learning about and going into rabbit holes with blockchain technology. And there's just so many use cases like for identity, healthcare, and so much more. Um, what is it? The supply chain too. Mm. So when is the net mainnet dropping for Pi Network? Well, technically we are already on mainnet. So we launched it uh, officially back in December of 2021. Um, but uh, Pi has uh, done one other thing that is non-consensus. The way you asked me about this question earlier, and, and there's so many non-consensus things, is we created the concept of uh, enclosed mainnet and uh, uh, open mainnet. So we're currently on the enclosed mainnet, which means that the real blockchain is out there. We are in the process of uh, performing KYC on the members and migrating the, their balances essentially over to the enclosed mainnet. During the enclosed mainnet period, it is not allowed uh, to connect the Pi blockchain with any other blockchain or external systems. Um, and during this period, it, uh, it gives us time to do a few things, such as migrating all the members, as I said, over to the mainnet, uh, continue building uh, utility for the platform. Uh, it allows us to have more uh, developers test their, um, their, their applications and uh, uh, being able to do all that without the, um, any uh, external noises or uh, uh, distractions, essentially. And uh, this is the, it's an example, like, for example, our the KYC solution we created was one of the Pi applications that we built on top of uh, our own platform. And uh, in order for someone to KYC themselves, they need to pay one Pi. And that one Pi is then distributed to everyone who is uh, uh, helping with their, their KYC. So there is, uh, there is both uh, uh, AI algorithms as with every KYC solution, but when the AI algorithm need help from humans, uh, then uh, these humans are coming from the same network. So it's self bootstrapping itself. And uh, uh, that's uh, happening even during the enclosed period. Um, yeah, so we are technically, the answer is that we are technically on mainnet already. It's called enclosed mainnet. And at some point we are going to move to the open network. Thank you for clarifying that. You answered a lot of questions that I asked for people that have been watching YouTube videos like me and bringing out their curiosity. So definitely appreciate that. Any last words before we close? Like what's next What's next for Pi Network? Um, so as I mentioned earlier, uh, we recently announced this KYC solution, which has been has complete more than uh, 3 million members right now have done their KYC. Uh, and uh, that essentially has is 
it's I think the largest blockchain migration in cryptocurrency history uh, out there. Uh, so uh, going forward, um, we want to continue uh, this KYC migration. We got a lot more members to to accommodate and uh, migrate uh, to mainnet. So that's one thing. Um, we need to continue building the ecosystem uh, during the enclosed period. Uh, and that's uh, basically by building more uh, infrastructure needed and enabling utilities to be built by the community itself. Uh, so we are, to this weekend actually, we are um, joining uh, three hackathons at uh, uh, schools uh, at uh, Berkeley, Harvard and Cornell. Uh, we are sponsoring tracks over there, so we're, we we may have some students building some uh, uh, Pi applications during those uh, uh, hackathons and and initiatives like this for utility building. And uh, finally, we are also building some utilities ourselves, um, including uh, on the user side, meaning that end, end user applications people can use, but also on the infrastructure side, such as uh, we have a brainstorm application where people can go and brainstorm and uh, create uh, uh, Pi apps. Uh, in fact, in the past, there was uh, there were more than 10,000 ideas that were proposed in this, uh, in this platform and we are improving it. Uh, and, uh, and other things like this, such as uh, we have a, a translation app, which is currently used by uh, some uh, uh, translation task, task force that we have for many, 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 many languages uh, that uh, people from the platform are translating themselves uh, our interfaces. So in the future, this uh, internal app that we have, we're going to make it uh, uh, public so that the other application developers can also use it uh, to translate their own applications. Um, that's uh, that's uh, it for us, uh, building, building, building. I'm honored. I'm honored to have you on the show. And it's been a pleasure of mine. I hope you had as much fun as I did on this. And yeah, man, I wish you the best of luck with your endeavors, doctor. And thanks for having me. <laughs> anytime, anytime. It was that fun. All right. So have a good night, sir. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.